Hey, welcome back, options traders. Happy Monday. I hope everybody had a fabulous weekend. And I got a question from one of our traders asking about this whole comparison thing between historic volatility and implied volatility. And this trader was saying, well, we know that the historic is an actual volatility number. So if the implied volatility is higher, then we should lean towards being a seller. And if the implied volatility is lower, we should lean towards being a buyer. Well, that's sort of true. That's maybe the basics of it. But where most traders make their mistakes is they assume that historic volatility is a single number, that it's just the number that we're going to see from the stock. You have to remember the stock market is always changing and dynamic. New information hits the market, so that can go out the window quickly. But there's probably an even bigger reason why you have to be suspicious of historic volatility. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. So let's go find out what that's all about. And as always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It helps so much to promote the channel and is always greatly appreciated. So yeah, there's definitely two types of volatility. Now there's others. Sometimes people talk about the realized volatility, you know, what actually occurred over the life of the option. But generally speaking, there are two basic camps of volatility. We have the historic volatility. And as I mentioned, yes, that is measurable. It's a fact. It's just a calculation. We'll look at some of those in a minute. But it's something that every brokerage platform in the world is going to give you an identical number for provided that they're measuring over the same time frame, but it is the actual volatility that has occurred in the past. And then we have the implied volatility, which is the market's estimate of volatility over the life of the option. Now, of course, we don't know if that's a good estimate until we get to expiration. And that's where sometimes people throw in another type of volatility, again, called the realized volatility and say, well, what was the truth? what actually took place over the option's life. And of course, once that occurs, it now becomes part of the historic volatility. So to make sure that you understand the distinction between these two, let's go over to the OIC's option pricing model and take a look at these two ideas. Okay, so now we're over into the OIC's website. We've seen this many times before. It's simply a pricing model. And here we've got the stock at 100, the strike at 100, at the money option, we have 30 days to expiration. I'm going to give it 30% volatility, interest rates of zero. And when we choose calculate, it says that the fair value of the option is about 343. Now in this case, that would apply to the calls and puts. It's because I didn't put an interest rate in here. Otherwise the call option would be priced a little bit higher. But the thing that we want to focus on is this right here, the volatility percentage. And when I entered that into the pricing model, well, where did I get it from? Most likely I got it from looking at the historic volatility and said, well, this is what the stock has done over the past, whatever, 30 days or 60 days, some time frame, And that's what it's done. And so I say, well, maybe that's kind of my best guess for going forward. And in most cases that will be true over shorter periods of time. So we think that this option should be trading for about 343, let's call it maybe roughly 350. But we look at our broker's platform and the option's trading for five. So what happened? Well, I can't change the stock or the strike, can't change the time to expiration. The only thing that I can really change is the volatility. So I'm saying, well, the market must have a different estimate of volatility than my 30% estimate. Now there's a shortcut way we can get to what that number is, and that's down over here called the implied volatility calculator. And I'm just going to select call or put. So let's assume that we're looking at a call and we say that the current market price, right? This is what we're actually seeing exists in the market in our broker's platform is five bucks. I choose calculate down here and it's telling me that the implied volatility is almost 44%. So even though I'm thinking that 30% is a reasonable estimate of volatility over the next 30 days, the market has a very different opinion. So if I put 43.75 in here, that should make this options price five bucks. And there we go. So that's why we call it an implied volatility. The market just 
bids up option prices under different assumptions and different pieces of news, and they've, for some reason, bid it up to five bucks. So we're just working the pricing model backwards and saying they are implying that the future volatility is going to be, let's call it 44%. And now we can get down to figuring out if this is a decent price to pay for the option. And this is where the whole problem comes from when people say, well, in my example, the 30% historic volatility is the correct baseline. It's the correct benchmark to measure this option's value from. And what I want to show you is that that is definitely not true. It might be true, but you've got to be very careful about that assumption. And I see so many traders that just would assume in this example that the option is overvalued and therefore it should be a sale. So the thing to take from this so far is that traders often make comparisons between implied volatility and historic volatility. Now they might also compare historic implied volatility to the current implied volatility. But the thing that I want you to understand about these comparisons is to think about it like a coin flip. What's your best guess on the percentage of heads, let's say? So here's an Excel demonstration doing just that. We've flipped a coin 200 times, and we're just recording the percentage of heads over time. So take a look at this. On the far left side of the chart, we get very big departures from 50%. You can see that we started off with 0% heads, started to get a lot of tails, and we started to get some heads creeping in. The percentages started to roll up. But over time, we start to stabilize on 50%. So notice how stable we get when we're looking at long-term averages versus the short run. Right? That's really one of the main points of this video. In the short run, anything can happen. Now let's go and do a recalc in Excel which is just gonna give us another sequence of 200 flips. So let's do that. Now look what happens. We started off pretty close to 50%, dropped off, came down to only 30%. Seemed to get a lot of tails in there. And then over time, what happens? We start to stabilize around 50%. And if we went way, way out here, let's say to 500 or 1,000, certainly a million, you're gonna get really super close to 50%. But once again, the thing that I want you to see is that on the right side of the graph, over time, we tend to get more accurate measures of what we might call the true long-term. But in the short run, anything can happen. That's the important point to see. All right, so now we're into the Thinkorswim platform, and let's see how traders often abuse this, or at least misunderstand the whole concept. So down below, I have the historic volatility compared to the implied volatility. And over here, you can see the legend that the blue color is the implied volatility and the historics up here in this pinkish color. And they'll look over here and say, well, they're about equal. So the options are basically fairly valued. Over here, we saw the implied volatility was very high relative to historic. And so the point is, is that they look at this number over here and they'll say it's at, if you point to it, look right there at about 44.1%. That's the historic. And they'll say, okay, well, that's what the historic volatility is, as if it's some type of a long-term average, such as when we're looking at a coin flip over hundreds or thousands of flips. And that's why you have to be so careful about thinking that this is the true historic volatility. And the reason is, if you look right here as well, Thinkorswim shows 20 comma annual. And what that means is it's measuring it over a 20 day period and then annualizing it. Now, if you want to change that, we can come up here to studies and we can come down to edit studies. And right there is our historic volatility. Choose this cogwheel right there. And there's the 20 day default. So if you really want to get a true longer term, you should extend that out by a lot. But you can see that this is only over 20 days. And by stock market standards, that is an incredibly short time. Yes, it is the historic volatility in the sense that it's measured, it's a calculation, but it's only a 20-day window. 
And that's the mistake that traders make. They just assume that this is the volatility for NVIDIA when it's really the historic volatility over a 20-day window. So to see where this number is coming from, let's go into an Excel spreadsheet and take a look at these calculations. So remember, right there, about 44.1% is the historical volatility. So now we're back into an Excel spreadsheet. And what I've done is I've downloaded a year's worth of data on NVIDIA, open, high, low, close. Now for the historic volatility, we usually use the close to close method. We're just looking at the closing prices. So the first thing we have to do is to come up with what's called a price relative. That's just this number divided by that number. So if the stock closed in round terms at 101 and yesterday's close was 100, the price relative would be 1.01. It's just saying that it closed 1% higher. So in NVIDIA's case, it closed up 5.5% higher between these dates. So that looks like that was on 11.3 of 22 to 11.4 of 22. So we're just going to record these every single row, just the day-by-day -day changes. We do a little, what's called a transformation. We take the natural log of these. There's a reason for it. I'm not going to go into it. But we just do these calculations all the way down. And then what we do is we figure out the window that we're looking for. So in this case, if we want to do a 20-day window, I'm going to count down 20 rows. We're just going to take the standard deviation. That's what this formula is telling us. Take the standard deviation of those first 20 rows, and then we multiply by 16 because we want to annualize it. And so remember, option prices are proportional to the square root of time. There's about 252 trading days. We take the square root, comes up to 16. That's where that 16 is coming from. And then we just copy this all the way down. So this is this number right here, 71%, is the standard deviation or the volatility over those 20 days. And then that number right there is for those 20 days. We're just going to slide down one day. We're looking at 20-day windows. And that's what this blue line is. It's just the recordings of all of these numbers. So if we come all the way down, and I didn't record the actual closing price for yesterday, but about 43.5. So still pretty close, but that's where those numbers are coming from. And so the point again to see is that when traders talk about the historical volatility being the volatility of the stock, it might only be a 20 day window. And you've got to be really careful of that about thinking that that is somehow the proper benchmark. So before you start selling options, just because the implied volatility is high, you need to also do some other calculations to see where it measures up to longer term historical volatilities. So when it comes to options trading, you've got to come up with your best guess on volatility. It actually can be a fairly easy concept. If you're looking for long term averages, what's the best guess on the long term volatility? It's the long term average. So if you're trading, let's say, SPY options, we know it's about 20%. If you're trading LEAPS options, that's going to be your best guess about the volatility over the life of that option. But if you want to know the short-term volatility, then the current volatility, current historic, is going to be a pretty good guess. So if you want to know what the next 30 days will be like, it is most likely going to be like the last 30 days. But these are just basic ideas. But the thing that I wanted to make very clear is that don't get caught into this trap of thinking that when your broker's platform says that the historic volatility is a certain number, that's a really short-term figure. It's subject to lots of fluctuations, just like we saw with the coin flips. So to make better options trading decisions, you have to take this into account. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new candlesticks and technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa to z.com, and you can find a link in the description below.